The conclusion, accordingly, was that by far the greatest stressors on the children were the two sudden and brutal losses of family connections. These psychological insults, Putnam summarized, were of an altogether different magnitude than were the sexual deviancy of the birth home and the intersibling sexuality of the adoptive home. When I finished reading Putnam's report, I put it down on the bench beside me and just let the fresh air, the seaside sounds, and the beauty of the afternoon wash over me like a shower. I remember now that my mind wandered that day, for some inexplicable reason, to an image of my son's recent Little League baseball game, during which he had slid head first into a very dusty home plate. He had been on first base when the next player hit a pretty hot grounder. These were just little guys, and at their age, this particular grounder, like most others, eluded both the shortstop and the left fielder. By the time the kid in left field had retrieved the ball and tossed it to the shortstop, my boy, having completely ignored his coach's signal to stop at third base, was heading full speed ahead for home plate. Six-year-old shortstops don't throw very hard, so the ball sailing home and my son could be seen racing each other at roughly the same speed. And they arrived at home plate at precisely the same moment. The commotion of the head-first slide and the catcher's tag threw up such a huge cloud of dust that both kids were invisible for a few seconds. The parent serving as umpire stood over the tangled-up players waiting for the dust to settle, and I stood in the stands alongside my aged father, who was visiting from out of state, hoping against all hope for the call to go my son's way. And it did. Safe, yelled out the umpire for all to hear. My son, still lying with his chest on home plate, looked up at the stands for his visiting grandfather and proud father, and when he found us, his dust-covered face broke into the toothiest smile I've ever seen. All this family stuff, as unimportant as it is in the great arc of human history, is not at all unimportant to the family members who live it. And that's what was lost to Seth and Ashley. Lost forever. By the way, the coach ended up giving the game ball to my son, who signed it in his childish scrawl and gave it to my father. It was on my father's coffee table for the rest of his life. I found it there years later when I went to clean out his modest little house after he died, and it made me cry. I cried for the beauty of intact intergenerational bonds that that baseball represented, and I cried for the tragic loss of family connections I had come to know in the Doe case. <laughs>